Whispers of a new language, under bridges lapping shores, insight in ebb and flow, vast tides streaming, we are ocean. A billion blue hearts, warm currents of intention, surge like saltwater blood, a new storm of moving water, we are ocean. Bringer of community, Hope beyond horizons to connect, to heal. We will remember, we are ocean. Still, seething, breathing, every second breath brine. One wave roaring, roots and future blue. We are ocean. Whispers of a new language for the good of flowing water. And all life supported, everything at source. We Ocean. We are all ocean. Take a deep breath right now. Just breathe into the belly and gently exhale. So 70% of the ocean, 70% of the oxygen you just inhaled comes from the ocean, from tiny plants some 400 million years ago. And 70% of our Earth is ocean, and yet only 10% of it has been explored. So today I want to share with you how the ocean can foster a greater sense of well-being and connection. Water memories are some of our most powerful. We experience the world and comprehend it through our senses. And the sea especially is, leaves a powerful imprint on our body-mind. So it's such a multi-sensory experience which is so important for our health. It's visually stimulating with a thousand shades of constantly moving blue, and wave-exposed coastlines release negative ions, believed to alter our biochemistry, lowering our cortisol, and lighting up our mood. And that's before we even dive into it. So these are just some of the things I'm beginning to explore in my research, and I'll dive into that in a little bit more. But first, if I may, I want to share a little bit about my sea connection. So, as a child, we'd go on these family road trips down the coast and camp next to the breaking surf. My sister and I curled up in the back of the van, and I remember staying up late to listen for a rise in the sound of waves that would signal a shift of tide or the arrival of a new swell. And I learned about the reef, the tide, the swell, some time spent in rock pools, uh, watching them fill in as my dad timed his surf for the flooding tide. The sea taught me that life is a continuum, a constant state of moving energy with no set beginning or end. The ocean shapes our very identity, our being and sense of belonging. When surfing, I often find myself on the edge, so where the sheer rock and full force of the Atlantic Ocean collide. It's in moments like these that capture the space in between and the energy of these environments and how they affect us. What happens in this moment, how present I am, the tiny pink dot there is actually me, will determine the outcome of what happens next. So I've been gifted this blue heritage or sea connection passed down through stories like genetic code from my surfing family, ancestry, and place of belonging in Donegal. But it's not just me who has this blue heritage. The sea remains in the salt water of our blood, our cells, our DNA, from when the first animals came ashore and took up a land life. And in the words of environmentalist Rachel Carson, we are all linked to this watery origin in the ancient sea. Unfortunately, there persists a strong yet artificial divide between society and sea, despite the sea being shaped by and shaping the state of the oceans. And this is what feeds a sense of separateness. So part of my work has been about how do we overcome that disconnect and recognize how entangled we are with the ocean. This concept of water environments as therapeutic is nothing new. And in fact, water has been considered an active life metaphor for millennia. And Taoist Lao Tzu wrote in 6th century BC, how nothing in the world is softer than water. But for attacking the hard, the unyielding, it has no equal. And in Victorian times, doctors even prescribed seaside holidays for respite and recovery from illness. And here in Ireland, holy wells continue to be important places for spiritual well-being and health promotion. So our bodies are literally shaped and formed by water. We have an ocean inside us, 
Like planet Earth, we are 70% salt water. Like our mammalian cousins, dolphins, we too have evolutionary aquatic markers. Amniotic fluid is the same density as seawater. Our mammalian dive reflex slows our heart rate when we enter the sea. And cold water stimulates the vagus nerve, calming our fight or flight response, releasing those feel good hormones and relieving stress. Our hearts mirror the circulatory system of the ocean. And in the words of Sylvia Earle, planet Earth is actually a beating blue heart. We depend utterly on this blue heart for our survival, development, and well being. It connects us all. So, I want to share with you a few ways that show how and why we are ocean and the power of the sea to heal. Be Like Water was first developed by myself and Shireen Gurami, Iran's first female triathlete in 2015, with minority groups of women and girls to um, make surfing more accessible and to facilitate a greater body self nature connection. And here is a mother and daughter entering the sea for the first time, arms outstretched to embrace their first wave. The wave hugging is the new tree hugging, guys. But these women offer a fresh perspective on the experience of the female body in water, stripping it back to the essence of why we do what we do, to connect more deeply to who we are, and through that process of change, to connect more deeply to one another and to become more alive to our environment, as Shireen so eloquently puts it. More recently, there is also um, growing interest in policy practice and academia in the ocean's impact on our health and well-being. And my current research with the Near Health Project at NUI Galway is one such project that looks at how nature can help society attain and restore health, including water. So we engage communities to better understand how people in Ireland value and connect with nature. And we evaluate uh, the impact of nature-based activities like sea swimming, beach cleans, and surf therapy. So my bias, um, my lifelong bias as a surfer, has certainly influenced my desire to better understand what I've intuitively felt my whole life, the power of the sea to heal. And emerging evidence is suggesting that physical activities in the sea, and in particular surfing, have confirmed psychological and physical benefits. One of the greatest challenges of our time that we face is the rise in mental health issues. When an, an estimated one in five young people in Ireland experience a mental disorder. Organizations such as Liquid Therapy are tapping into the sea and surfing to tackle these mental health issues and the stigma surrounding them in a novel way. And part of the health benefits are linked to the fact that surfing is challenging. And if you've tried it, you might, you might know that. But that's important, and it's such a dynamic and constantly changing environment, we're always learning and adapting, which has really important benefits for both body and mind. Surfing's also playful. It's about letting go and being in the moment, um, being aware of our environment. And increasingly, it's also being recognized as a powerful embodied learning experience for leaders. For example, the Wavemaker Collective in Portugal recognizes how being immersed in nature, especially the sea, can be uh, beneficial for our creative thinking. Or move like water, highlighting the interrelatedness of our bodies and water and helping women develop greater body literacy, cycle awareness, and self-worth and connection. So the ocean heals, but it also needs to be healed. Our actions directly impact the ocean. 97% of our waste ends up in the sea, and it's estimated that by 2050, there will be more plastic in the ocean than fish. So how do we become a more ocean literate society? To be ocean literate means to understand how and why we are ocean. So we need new stories and experiences for why the ocean matters. In some ways, maybe to reconnect no matter where you are, or remember to connect with the breath. Just breathe. We are always connected to the ocean through our breath. Find your flow. Ask yourself, where in your life are you meeting resistance and what would it be like if you could be more like water? So I've shared how much the ocean does for us and you'll learn in just a moment what you can do for the ocean with our next speaker. But before I close, I have a proposal for Ireland as an island nation 
What if we could become the first nation to be ocean literate, fluent in the language of the sea? It's through this understanding that there's empathy and connection. And that's how we overcome the overwhelming challenges that we seem to face. It won't happen through technical fixes. They're important tools, not solutions. The only way, ultimately, is through the heart. To the ocean in all of you, thank you.